Breaking news, the Illinois House voting to override the governor's veto of that state budget, which means that they've passed the budget the first time in two years. The caveat, it means also higher income taxes. And it brings us to a tale of two cities here in New York. For instance, prices of Manhattan real estate hitting a new all-time high in the second quarter. Now uh, apartments selling for an average of $2.19 million. This is according to a new report. This is homelessness in New York has also spiked by 39% this year. And all of it raises questions over just what conditions progressive policies are actually creating. Joining me now to discuss, Jason Meister, Sonata Ajim, and Katie Freights. Uh, Sonata, since this is your first time on the show, and you, you deal with wealthy uh, folks in, in New York, do you see what I see? Uh, here at 47th Street, we have encampments now of homeless people, mm -hmm. but it's so ironic because they're, they're sleeping in the shadow of another sky rise going up. So you've got a billion dollar building and you've got these people who don't have a job. It feels like a weird juxtaposition. It's really tough when you see all the homeless people when you're passing by on the streets and you know that the prices have just gone up again. It's a really tough predicament that we're in. But when it comes to actual housing, um, it's on solid footing. And the reason for that is primarily because of the job stability and increased confidence in what's going on with the economy. How much in New York in particular, though, is like foreign money, uh, you know, some Chinese uh, billionaire afraid maybe one day the communists or Russian. So maybe let me get two or three pads in the city just in case. Well, foreigners love New York real estate, regardless whether they're from China or the Middle East. That's a fact. But this past quarter, most sales were actually fueled by uh, properties and uh, transactions that were actually financed. So that shows us that banks are much more secure and comfortable lending. Jason, you're, you know, obviously you're also, you're also in the real estate business, but you're also a shrewd observer of society. What do you make of it? And it's not, by the way, just New York. In Chicago, for instance, you've got 56 cranes, uh, big new cranes. In fact, uh, a few cities have more, and yet people are leaving. Anyone who could afford to, they're right. trying to get out of that city. Charles, if you look at the, the coasts of the U.S., the liberal coasts, that's where you're seeing this homeless problem. Uh, it's it's policy-driven. Um, you have these archaic rent stabilization and rent, con rent control laws here in Manhattan. You also have an increase in historic district commissions. So that doesn't allow for new supply of rental housing. The, t the property tax laws favor home ownership over rental product. So you have this supply and demand problem, and that's one of the biggest drivers ho of homelessness among families in these major cities. So it's, it's really these rent regulations, historic districts. Downtown, there's a historic district that contains a Hess gas station. There's nothing historic about that gas station. Right. I, I think that was in that movie Zoolander. No, well, anyway, I digress. <laughs> Kay, Katie, uh, but it's not just a New York issue, right? We've seen this in, in towns and cities where progressives have been in charge for a long time. I guess the most egregious examples would be at Detroit or Gary, Indiana, uh, where it's income inequality is actually worse than anywhere else in this country. Uh, so you have to wonder if that's the solution or maybe that's the reason for it. Well, right. And if prices were going up and homelessness was going up in a red city with a red mayor, it would be any Democrat's dream of a talking point. But unfortunately, New York and other cities like this are bright blue, and de Blasio is a bright blue mayor. And you can't just shell endless amounts of millions of dollars at building shelters for homeless people. It's clearly not working. A 39% spike is enormous. And they have to look at these policies and say money, shelling money out for no gain is not getting them any sort of a tangible return. And their liberal policies are not helping at all. In the meantime, uh, you see this continuing, right? You see at least on the uh, on the other uh, upper end of this, it's going to continue. You see the demand there, the building, all of these buildings. You know, as a layman, you look around and you say, golly, it's got to stop at some point. Well, we had a soft 2016, and there were quite a few buyers that with pent-up demand on the sidelines. So finally in 2017, we have such an increased volume. Actually, just number of sales went up by 15%, and prices also had gone up. So that shows you that the market is solid. Also, what had happened is that many sellers who had this grand vision of what their property may have been worth finally came to terms with an actual value. So yeah, it's only worth $2 million instead of <laughs> 200 grand I paid I, for it. Real quick, though, Jason, I do want to ask, are we in a Dickens sort of environment then where, where all these major cities, because of these uh, pro progressive policies, high taxes, and other bureaucratic regulatory restrictions, where you have the super rich and super poor? Is that, a, is that an economic reality now for most cities? I think it's an economic reality, and it's only going to get worse under these liberal policies. 
like I said, these are historic historic district commissions need to be. We need to get done, get rid of them. These rent stabilization laws. We need more rental product. We don't need more houses. We don't need more condos. We have a, we have way too many condos. I actually have a little bit of a contrarian view. I think the Uber luxury market in this city is going to have to come down uh, quite a bit. Um, we've had way oversupply. Land prices have gone to to nosebleed levels, and I think we're going to have a reset. Well, I'm not, I don't think anyone's going to break out the harps for, the, for those rich folks, but <laughs> the people I'm stepping over to get to work, more and more of them each morning, I'm scratching my head and wondering what the heck is going on. Something isn't right. Thank you all very much. Really appreciate Thank it. Well, President Thanks. Trump warned.